you are a strong supporter of The Voice, but you've just got I am. your issues with, with the framing and the way it's been put together. And as you said, the process, you said this week that the process has been dead wrong. And you also mentioned that of the 25 <laughs> efforts that Labor's tried to change the constitution through a referendum, 24 have failed. So how do they get that process yeah, back on track I, now? Well, exactly. And with all respect to those who say, look, you don't have to worry about getting bipartisan support nowadays because young people only read Twitter and things like that. I don't think that washes. When it comes to amending the Australian Constitution, the Labor Party needs a bit of humility. Yes, they've tried 25 times and failed 24 times. To have voted in the successful Labor Party referendum, you have to be over 97 years of age. And it was about things like maternity allowances and child endowment, things which could be extended to all citizens. This is something which is quite distinctive. And in order to get there, we do need Mr Dutton and Mr Lisa to be solidly on board with whatever goes forward in terms of the proposal of words. And if we don't, we're going to have continuing division where, sadly, a referendum might not only be lost, but the campaign itself would cause division rather than unity in the community. And that's mm. why I'm going in strong at the moment. I think now is the time for the humility to be learnt, mistakes to be admitted and to say, right, let's get the formula of words right, let's have absolute legal certainty so we can all get out there and then evangelise the cause of an Indigenous voice to Parliament, full stop, but with then provision that Parliament can provide that the voice can then do things with executive government subject to statute and not as a constitutional entitlement. Because at the moment, just finally, at the moment, voters are out there that have to be deciding between High Court judges at the moment, saying, OK, we'll weigh up this one versus exactly. that one because the opinions, yeah. it's basically, they're, they're mixed right now. Show me a punter in the street who wants to say, well, I'm not only keeping up on the present High Court, but, yes, I've got... French, who said this, Callanan, who said that, at opposite ends of the scale. We've got Hain in the middle. We'll have a few others buying in. For God's sake, that's no way to amend the Australian Constitution. And it's no way to do our politics. And it puts them in a very invidious position. They are people of the highest integrity. And the irony is that, of course, what we've got is a series of the more progressive lawyers out there saying, oh, don't worry, this won't mean any change. Let me assure you of this, Kieran. If the amendment were carried, it'll be those progressive lawyers who'll be the first ones appearing before the High Court saying, aha, here's a constitutional entity. It's got a constitutional entitlement. You, the High Court, should now develop a novel jurisprudence. And that's why Callanan has rightly said, no matter what you think of a voice, yes or no, if the present provision was voted in, there would be a decade or more of litigation as that jurisprudence and jurisdiction was established. And we need to avoid that. Father Frank Brennan, yeah, we do indeed. Thanks so much for your insights and, and the work that you've put into this, an, an Indigenous voice to Parliament, considering a constitutional bridge, your book out this week. Thanks for your insights. Appreciate it. Thank you. And let's hope we can get to yes.